We're Jake and Fred. Uh, we work for an open source project called EPUBJS, and we are talking about online ebook annotation. And maybe just uh, a little bit about ebooks in general and why ebooks should be on the web and that we should be able to interact with those documents much like we interact with HTML documents. Um, so at the moment, people are, are obsessed with how they read books, whether it's on a Kindle or an iPad or on you know, good old printed pages. And this conversation, though important, takes place in the shallows and misses the deeper currents that, in the digital age, are pushing American culture under the control of ever fewer and more powerful corporations. Um, this is George Packer in the New Yorker article, Cheap Words. Um, and I think what I take away from that is this whole discussion that takes place in common circles, though very interesting, of ebook versus real book kind of misses, misses a, a big point. It, you know, there are more interesting questions. For example, how did that book you're reading come to be made and wind up in your hands? In other words, exploring the nature of content discovery and creation and distribution. Um, and this is the present. Uh, we have these closed, centralized platforms, walled gardens of paid digital content, uh, non-interoperable. Um, and the current state of annotations uh, in ebook readers is going is actually pretty sucky. But um, Fred's going to talk about it a little bit more, and then we're going to talk about how to make it better. I think this is attached to your pocket. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> you just, there you go. So the current state of ebooks readers. Here's the Kindle, and you can see that when you're making your annotation. <laughs> It pops up uh, over the text you're annotating. Text you're annotating. And here's iBooks, which is better because the annotations are in the margin. But the text box only lets you put in a teeny amount of uh, text, and you might have much more to say about it. And this is uh, uh, Google Play, and uh, it not only anchors to the wrong element, so I highlighted the one down there. But when I hover over it, it, it actually covers up the annotation that I was reading in reference to the pop-up. So let's see if it repeats. Yeah, that doesn't seem ideal. And, and finally, all of these examples overload the highlight and, and text selection mechanism. So it's using it for highlighting notes, definitions, uh, reporting errors, all kinds of things. And this takes what's a very simple and natural gesture and makes it a very complicated, modal, uh, involved process. And the big point is that these notes are non-interoperable and locked into these proprietary formats, um, which is like great for your notes. like. Um, you know my own thinking, my own uh, my own contributions to the, this text. Uh, that's much less useful to me as as an as an academic, as someone who's a writer. Um, and not to mention, they're not shareable very easily in the way that um, certain other things we've seen a lot of today, such as social book and hypothesis are. So this kind of brings us to EPUB. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of standards. I, I feel that standards are things that we can all build off of, um, and that they're good for competition and diversity and um, good design. EPUB is a web-friendly document. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about EPUB, but just really shortly, it's, it's kind of like a website in a, in a package. Um, and it's an extremely powerful package of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and uh, one of the things that we were sort of bugged about is that there was not a lot of support for this package. Like, honestly, it's, this library is not that complicated, like, um, because the browser handles all the rendering of the CSS and the HTML and the JavaScript, because browsers are really good at doing that. Um, so we started this EPUBJS project, because we wanted to see more web ebooks. We wanted to see long-form com content on the web. Um, in ways that we could interact with it and do things like open annotations. So we started EPUBJS. A uh, few things about it. It's uh, open source, uh, free BSD license, um, 600, uh, 600 stars on GitHub and hopefully growing. Um, lots of people participating, participating in opening issues and new features being added all the time. Um, and Fred's going to talk a little bit more about EP, EPUBJS and what webbooks can do for not only open annotation, but just uh, in general. 
Yeah, so again, as you said, it's not that complicated of a task. It's uh, EPUBs are HTML and CSS, and it's just a matter of getting them out of that package and displaying them primarily in the correct order. Uh, so what we wanted to create was a simple interface for taking your, your book and rendering it to the screen. Uh, so you can see here is the basic example to get something to show up. And once you know, uh, custom elements start taking off or are more used, it can be as simple as embedding a video. So uh, you put the source of your book in and something like this comes out where you have uh, paginated text and you have the ability to go back and forth and to change pages and all of the things that you'd expect a book interface to let you do. Which brings us to annotations. Yes, annotations are important. I also work for Hypothesis, um, but one of the things we've been working on is integrating annotations in ebooks. Um, uh, so this is a, a, a GIF of hypo uh, uh, Hypothesis annotation in uh, Moby Dick. You can select some text, and it has all the uh, features and capabilities that normal Hypothesis has. The UI has been changed a little bit, so it looks uh, a little different, but um, everything you can do in Hypothesis, you can uh, do in EPUBJS, um, which is cool because it creates basically like a, a social book kind of framework that anyone can use, um, and it's, it's open. I've uploaded my own book, 23rd Century Romance with EPUBJS, um, and people annotate it, and it's really cool actually to see those annotations. Uh, so, uh, as books are not exactly like most web texts, one of the things we've been working on is how can EndNotes factor into this? So here's a quick example of one of the EndNote functionalities we're working on, where you'll notice that you're composing the note first and then anchoring it to the text. So uh, just like you can anchor it once, you can re-anchor it, you can change pages, you can navigate, you can do all the things that you could do writing a EndNote in a physical book, but digitally. So both of these are made possible by uh, linking and anchoring and using standard ways of referring to a piece of text that means that notes in our reader work with other readers, work on normal websites, that enabling a whole bunch of interactivity that wasn't possible before. So to quickly go over some of our linking, there's the linking by ID and simple URLs. So that's your normal URL link. There's linking by page number, which uses the EPUB page list. And this means that if I say page 230, it's the same as the page 230 in the print text, the same in the Kindle book, the same everywhere, so that we can all synchronize on that. And finally, uh, using EPUB CFI to refer very accurately to a piece of text and a character range, and there's a whole bunch more things that this can do that you guys should definitely check out on the IDPF's website. So really quickly, we have some suggestions for reading platforms. Uh, the first is to use robust note authoring, uh, so allow images and links and markdown and nice formatting. The second is to anchor and allow re-anchoring of the text uh, this is really important because you know you might get three pages later and realize that part of this is referenced in the note that you were trying to make. Uh, leave text selection for highlighting. Uh, so hopefully there's other actions that we can use to create notes, such as double clicking or uh, notes in the sidebar or the toolbar. Uh, and allow longer notes. So you know once we have these tools to create these very rich notes, we have to be able to display them. They might be several pages long. They might be much longer than the content of, uh, that it was anchoring to in the first place. Excuse me. And finally, uh, CSS print style sheets for these notes. So once they're a part of the document, you should be able to print them out with the document. They need to truly live with this text. 
Uh, and one last thing that I forgot when I was going out, you, you wrote this in the notes, but when I was going over the, the project, all the UI and stuff for EPUBJS is, is just an example. Um, the real power is in the JavaScript library and the, the render engine, so you can use EPUBJS without any of this UI. It's just an example, something that makes it really easy for people to like, that don't want to do extra work and don't want to customize their, customize their UI to, um, to just get started easily. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, the note I wanted to end on is this whole, I think there's this idea of platforms versus ecosystems. I think web standards and standards in general, such as EPUB, allow for more ecosystems where we can all be a part of things, where we don't try to build um, systems such as that are closed and proprietary uh, and often hinder interoperability. Um, and so like the ideas of books in the browser um, based on open standards and open annotation allow for a lot of really exciting possibilities in which I think uh, as, content, as a content creator myself uh, uh, could be a really exciting future, a much more exciting future than if uh, Kindle comes out with its own version of annotation and iBooks has its own version of annotation and they all are in their siloed kind of space and you know, that's not an exciting vision to me both as, as an author um, but also as, as a technologist um, it's a very, um, uh, it's a much smaller vision. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, that's, uh, that's all we have. Uh, please uh, check out the library. Um, feel free to star, fork it, uh, or tell people about it and use it. We appreciate issues and feedback and would love to hear what sort of features you would need. Thank you. Do you have some standard mechanism for uh, embedding or maybe even assigning permanent identifiers to the EPUB? So it would be nice that if I download it and use it on my thing, that then I could transfer the annotations I made to the online version or to some other version? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the hope behind linking and particularly using the EPUB CFI. So that's a standard that we use internally for all of our anchors and hopefully your reader locally will use as well. So they should be pretty interoperable. Yeah, the, the IDPF is also working on perhaps unique identifiers for, for books because there's a lot of problem. I, I'm not sure if that totally got to your question. There's a lot of problem with like ISBNs, for example, and, and versions of ebooks. So uh, this is, this is a, a metadata problem, and uh, you know, I think uh, uh, one thing is that like, th things like canonical URL or um, like are just not quite used in ebooks yet, but they could be. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be uh, done in that particular area. So it's much easier to do exactly what you're talking about. Um. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention, um, we're, um, the IDPF is great to work with. Uh, they also have their own project called Redium, which you should also check out. Um, they're making an SDK for e-ink devices, and they, we've, we've uh, talked with Bill and the others, and they're very interested in implementing open annotation in their reader, um, and, and, and also adding sort of support for um, e-ink devices, and I, they can't be here, so I just wanted to say that for them. Uh, Frederick Hirsch, okay, this is a weird question because it's not JavaScript and web, but it, there's Calibre, which people use to manage EPUBs and so on. I, th I think you're probably familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking off the wall whether somehow that could be fit integrated with this or, or something could happen. And I realize that they're, they're kind of separate domains, but have you talked to them at all or thought about how the annotations might move? I use it all the time, but I've, I've never spoke with them. I mean, to me... Uh, there is this sort of separation on what's possible when the books are web resources online versus on my local computer. Um, but yeah, I love Gal. It's very useful. That's not a question, but just a quick note regarding the IDPF. Um, there is a formal um, process ongoing in the IDPF at the moment um, to standardize how open annotation will be used with EPUBs. Um, there's the first draft at idpf.org slash EPUB slash OA. Um, comments are very welcome either to me or to the... To the um, yeah, I, I saw you were talking about JavaScript in the EPUB file. I was wondering, is that in the actual book file or is that just part of the reader? And if it's in the actual book file, what does it do? 
Um, there can be JavaScript in the book file, but our library primarily renders out the book file, so uh, it would be on your website, and, and you would be grabbing a book file and rendering that to a div, uh, adding the JavaScript to your site, not into the book. Thank you.